It is time for a tournament arc. Mashal is entering into its first and perhaps only official tournament arc of the entire series and I am so hyped for it. But first let me slow down, my name is the Anonymous Weeb or Weebs for short. Here today with my review of Mashal Magic and Muscle Chapter 47 called Mashal Bernadette and the Selection Exam. The chapter starts off with the black magic spell, Black Partisan, colliding with Margaret's sound shield and causing it to explode, leaving behind a long straight fissure in the ground with black smoke flowing around it, the same black smoke which the Partisan was giving off, possible hinting at a possible side effects of the magic or just a result of the spell dissipating. Personally I'd like it to be the latter given how in the previous chapter Margaret was alarmed by black magic, so having it have some sort of lasting, or additional effect would be cool. And speaking of Margaret, he somehow managed to not only grab his companions but also get out of dodge in the time it took for his shield to completely shatter and before Rain could follow up his attack. Following this, Mash steps out from behind some trees to thank Rain in his usual deadpan way with his uncertainty about if he should even thank Rain for what he did, a sign of Mash still being socially awkward and not certain of why Rain did what he did. Rain tries to play it off that he was playing with bunnies, despite the fact obviously Mash heard what happened and probably saw it too, not only that, but he responds in his deadpan way, making it even more clear that he does not believe him, saying that Rain was a fan of bunnies, going along with the whole excuse despite it being blatantly obvious that it's not true. Rain attempts to encourage Mash to do his best, saying that nothing good will come of his failure, so he must win to give his challenge meaning. Rain then leaves, saying he has some bunnies to take care of, obviously referring to the fact he is planning on going after Margaret, to do what is unknown, perhaps to kill him or to just make sure he can no longer go after Mash it is impossible to guess. With Mash saying he knew he liked bunnies, still just going along with it, probably because he doesn't want to get involved in any more trouble than he already is and Mash has never come off as the sort of person who would actively seek out people, even if they want to hurt him. We then transition to Margaret, carrying his companions, looking at his damaged hand he thinks on the fact that triple liners, wand increases the baseline of his magic to the point even an entry level spell second magic, thinking on how he would not have minded trying to test his second spell against it but did not want to risk his companions. I do not know what he is thinking, he got lucky getting away with just a damaged hand and his companions getting a bit rouged up, if only a basic spell was able to compare with a second spell, trying to fight rain would be suicide, since obviously he would have to possess spells of that deer as well, or at least you would expect him to. Margaret's companion seems genuinely regretful for being in the way, believing that Margaret could have fought against rain if they were not there. But Margaret's simple reply is not to worry, he believes in saving the best till last. He can say that all he likes, but in the previous chapter he seemed pretty shock and, in this chapter, his defensive spell was easily shattered without any sort of external effort on Rain's part. Unless he has something up his sleeve, which we have no way of knowing, he would not have stood a chance, at least in my option. We then skip forwards with a text box telling us that they spent the rest of the end of semester break doing whatever they wanted, which if we are being honest, they should have been trying to figure out how they would win the upcoming tournament rather than goofing off and playing games. We end up on Finn, thinking back how Mash gave both him and Dot three golden coins from the amount they got from Lang. He begins sobbing, crying out about how he cannot, seems like he is still having issues with his self-worth and will continue to do so for some time, personally I think he has an inferiority complex towards his brothers, especially Rain. Any future development for his character will surely be tied to this. We then cut to Lance, sitting alone in front of a fireplace looking at a locket with a photo of his sister inside before closing it and pressing it to his forehead, asking her to wait for him. So despite everything that's happened up to this point, despite knowing what will happen to Mash if he fails to become a divine visionary, he is still going to go in full force. Reconfirming his resolve to fight, for his sister, even against his friends. 
if he and Mash end up facing one another in whatever test they must face, I can see a lot of raw emotion being displayed by Lance, while Mash just being his usual relaxed self, telling him not to just do what he feels is right, or to do just do what he wants. Then, we cut over to Dot, who can't sleep and ends up staying up to who knows when checking through his luggage, apparently because he is too hyped to go to sleep, I however think that rather than just being hyped up, he's worried about what he is about to get himself into, despite all his bravado I feel like Dot is one of those people who truly realizes his own limitations even if he doesn't admit it. Finally, we end up at Mash's house, where he and his father have a heart to heart about the fact that it was discovered Mash can't use magic, how he'll be charged with the crime of being born that way, which I seriously hope is something which gets addressed by the end of this story, because if in the end only Mash is spared for this crime it's going to be a hollow ending, if he doesn't meet up to their demands. All his father can do is hang his head and apologize. Lamenting the fact, he could not give him a normal life, how he did not provide enough for him, how he did not help him to phase into society better, which I fully agree with. This whole story could have been avoided if he had gotten Mash a tattoo on his face or had just gotten him a mask, there was a multitude of things he could have done, but if he had done that, we would not have a story, so put it down to plot-induced stupidity. But Mash is not having any of that, instead he responds that he is happy, saying how his father is always looking out for him, how he was able to experience school if only for a little bit, how he was blessed with friends, how he got to eat lots of cream puffs. Of course, Mash must mention his favorite food product, even in what would otherwise be a rather touching moment. He reaffirms that he is in fact happy before thanking his father, causing the old man to stare at him before lowering his head, saying that is good and for him to come back safe, this is quite a sweet scene, we all know that Mash loves his father and his father loves him, but getting to see it even in this simple scene is quite nice. We then get a breakdown on how one becomes a divine visionary. It is divided up into three sections, with the coin collection being the first stage, second being the candidate selection exam and the third being the final exam. To reach the second stage, a person must have acquired five or more gold coins, or at least that is how it usually plays out but due to the prison break by Innocent Zero, the exam has been pushed forwards and now only three coins are required to qualify. Then we see where this test is supposed to take place, within a huge stone coliseum filled with spectators, before single panel images of individuals who managed to perform the feat of collecting three or more gold coins, along with a text box stating their name, their dorm and how many coins they have collected. As this is going on, an announcer declares that magic is the core of society, that it is everything. That those without magic have no rights, and that they have gathered the magic users who are at the pinnacle of society. Wahlberg comments on how Mash is facing a difficult road, with Margaret entering this year. The final scenes of the chapter are Mash's name with him having the largest number of gold coins and as he walks out into the stadium, his cloak bellowing behind him the announcer declares that the examines have entered the arena. I am so hyped for this, I have always loved tournament arcs, ever since I first watched the Naruto Chunin exams and I am excited to see where this is going. I only recently caught up with this series, but I feel like this is going to become a mainstay on my channel for quite some time to come. But that is all I have to say about this chapter, so without further ado I've been the anonymous weeb and this has been my review of Mashal chapter 47.